a dairy-free creamy chicken dish with some lemon, some dill, and a little asparagus. It's completely allergen friendly, or at least can be. So join me. Let's talk about what's involved in cooking it. It's a quick and easy recipe. And what happens when you can't find one of the ingredients? Hey guys, there's weird pop ups on these today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we have some visitors. Say hi, Drew. Say hi. They're running around here just doing their thing. Um, but that's not why you're here. You're here to cook. So let's get to it, shall we? Today's going to be a little bit different. I know normally I'm over at the counter and you can see me prepping. Today, everything happens in the skillet. Um, I'm using my everything plate. Hmm. Talking with you guys, right? <laughs> I'm using my everything pan. And for those of you that don't know what an everything pan is, this is an everything pan. See that side? You can basically make everything in here. You can make pasta. You can make stuff to put in some tacos. You, I mean, you can make spaghetti sauce in there. You can't make a lot of spaghetti sauce, but you can make spaghetti sauce in there. Today's recipe is the lemon dill chicken with asparagus. It's a creamy sauce, but it is a dairy-free creamer, okay, or dairy-free creamy. And we're going to talk about what happens when you can't find the oat milk half and half. Because the reality is, it, half the time you can't find half and half that's dairy-free, right? Even when you go to a specialty store, sometimes you just, you just can't find it. So what happens? We can talk about that. So for right now, I'm going to get a kid off of a counter. And what you're going to see, let me turn. I don't, I don't know how to turn my camera around. Hmm. What do you guys think? So let's see. We're going to flip this around. <gasps> Go. No. But. Yes! All right, so this is what you want to pay attention to. You want that, right? You don't care what I look like. I get it. I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. Oh, tree bug, thank you so much. All right, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your chicken in the pan because you need to cook the chicken first. All right, <clears throat> now, what happens? is you put the chicken in, all right? And what I'm using, these are chicken breast tenderloins. Why? Because they're easy to cook. Mm. Mm. Oil would be, would be nice. Maybe wild cooking show without some, some sort of thing, right? All right, so we're gonna take this and we're basically going to make the chicken. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do with this right now. Um, one of the things I usually do is I put it in the sand. I sort of put a salt and pepper on it. So you got everybody all uh, moves up. There we go. All right. Let's get them all together. And then I'm going to make, put some salt and pepper on this sucker. I love this thing. Himalayan salt grinders. Love, love Himalayan salt. Why? Because you don't need to use as much. It actually has, it's kind of like sea salt in that it has some magnesium in there. It's got some, um, some other minerals in it. But right now I'm drawing a complete weight on that is not true. I will put it as a description because Himalayan salt is just one of those salts where, you know, it, it, how do I say this? Himalayan salt and sea salt are the healthiest of the salt. Let me just put it that way. Salt brings out the flavor, so what it does is it will wake up your senses, your taste buds, it wakes up everything else. Um, and it really does bring out flavor of food. All right, so what we need is we need fully cooked chicken, okay? 
Now, while our chicken is cooking, what we're going to do. No, 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 Robinson. I think Dave Matt explains who Will Robinson is. Yeah, mm-hmm. My little, my little helper there. Um. Thank you, Keegan. So now, one of the things you can do while you're waiting for that chicken to cook is get your asparagus ready. The fourth thing that happens is you're going to take the chicken out of the pan, okay? And put it into a dish, something hot, you know, side dish, whatever. Um, and then from there, we're going to put our asparagus in, put our garlic in. Here's the deal with your garlic. Make sure you do not burn it. You definitely want oil in the pan first. <laughs> that, that is like a given. And I'm going to teach you a little tricks about asparagus. A lot of people don't know. I have to learn this from. A friend X who is a train chef, but doesn't really work at the chef. If that makes sense. Um, we actually have a couple of people like that. Uh, Mandy Prince, you'll see her as Mandy Fishnell Prince inside the Facebook group. I like my I like my chicken kind of crispy on the outside like this. I don't know, it's just a preference thing. Um, you don't necessarily need it like that, but it helps. All right, so here's the deal. ready? So as you are taking these in, you want the ends off, right? Well, if you break it, it automatically breaks where it's natural. And here's what typically happens is you put your finger here, you put your finger here, right? Because there's a surrogate press, and it's just going to break. In the wild, out in public, in nature, it is actually better to just break it versus cutting it. Because when you cut, you actually almost feel. So if I were to cut this, for instance, I'm going to cut from the top to the bottom, right? Well, that cut pushes the skin over into the other side. So when you break it, it's a clean break. See that? Completely clean break. And that's what you want from your produce. You don't want to peel off things. You want everything open. You want produce to be able to remove all their goodness. Because I mean, especially things like asparagus and spinach and kale. So what happens with these is, look, I don't know if you guys, these can be in multiples. You don't have to be one with a time. For those of you looking going, I am not going to break or sit and break all of these feathers. One at a time. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I know what you're looking at. Let's turn that off, shall we? I got all my asparagus busted up. We got our coconut cream. We got our oil. We got our dough. Chicken. It's working it. Let's see where we are. Another joy of making tender wings. So my goal with this show is actually to get these meals down to half an hour, including my little chatterbox stuff, right? And this is the recipe that... I've had quite a few people tell me that it's taken them 20 to 30 minutes and they're done. And most of the cooking time is the chicken. You have to make sure the chicken stuff. And typically, small chicken like this or you know, the chicken breast tenders, or not chicken breast tenders, that's what we have. Um, the thin chicken breast, or to take a whole chicken breast and put it into thin slices. It's not going to take you very long to make this chicken. Chicken doesn't take very long to cook. And to make sure that it is cooked so that you're, it's a healthy cook. 
You want to make sure poultry is completely done. Do not go sushi on poultry, please. Make sure there is no pink spot. I was excited about this recipe specifically too because I know it is so yummy. All right. Let's turn around and get a light. I'll turn it down on you, but if you're watching, if there's a couple of you guys watching, um, let me know if the fan gets too high. Like if you can't hear me. Alright. Now we've got our chicken. It looks like we got some good cooked chicken. So what we want to do is we want to take it out and put it to the side. So you need to make sure you have a something, porcelain, metal, something, glass, that will help retain the heat from the chicken, okay? Because what you're going to do in here right now is you are going to put your garlic in. Now, if you saw me last week, you saw me smash the garlic, right? Well, this week I'm using a clean pan because we aren't actually using a knife in this recipe today. And this is the part where we start getting all oh, this much white. This is where we start really making this dish off. Right, so the very first thing you want to throw in here is your garlic and your dill. Okay. <clears throat> you want a little bit of oil. You don't want it to sit like that for very long. And that's from here. Oh my god. The garlic press, shall we? All right, so we need a little bit of oil, even though you see some of that oil in there, you need a little bit in the middle. Here, bud. I'm in the kitchen, bubba. There we go. All right, get a little something to scrape that out. All of us. There we go. You guys smashing garlic. Oh, satisfying, and it does the job. Oh, you want your spinny? Yeah? Here. I'll spin it. one of those things you need to wind it up, and then you, oops, 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 let's put this back in. You wind it up, and the propeller goes flying. That one of those. Oh, there we go. All right. You know, you know how I was talking about don't let it brown? That's exactly what's happening right there. Move it. Keep it moving. Okay. All right. So from here, we're going to put a little dill inside the pan. And then we're going to throw the asparagus in. There it is. Tops. All right, let's get, we need three tablespoons of dill, there we go, all right, we got our dill in there, let's get this stuff moving, there we go, mix it up, now, we are going to add the asparagus, and remember how I told you you break it? If you ever break spaghetti noodles, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Now, what you want is this asparagus is going to turn bright green. Hi, Bugaboo. All right. And that's, it's just like finished. Once it turns bright green, you know it's cooked. You can tell. Oh, oh, the vibrancy. I love the vibrancy of of a lot of these green vegetables and you know it's hard to sit when i talk to people and say oh my god you gotta make this because like it's so good and just when it's green pull it so see how some of them are starting to get bright green so when they go into the pan they're that kind of flat green really not much color to them right and I'm going to make all these suckers because I love asparagus. I'm that person that will throw extra vegetables into recipes just because I want the vegetables. 
I, I mean, I have since learned, because I've, I've been doing that for years, and I've since learned that by doing that, I'm maintaining my plant-based diet. I love having a little apple. You too? You're, you're doing that too? Good job. All right. So once we have more of a green tone throughout, which really is not going to take you guys very long, at this point you need to make sure you have your lemons, you have your coconut cream, um, butter, everything at the ready because it is go time. So see how you've got mostly bright green, like this, this vibrant green right here? See those? Thank you, bud. That's what you're looking for. All right, so now what you would no what you would normally put in here, what the recipe calls for, is oat milk, right? Well, the deal with oat milk is a lot of times you cannot find oat milk half and half, coconut milk half and half, um, almond milk half and half. And the reason the recipe calls for oat milk, not any of the others, is for one simple reason. I have found over the years that by using oat milk, you're minimizing the opportunity to have any flavors change in this, okay? The coconut cream, the canned coconut cream, unsweetened, same thing. Now, ha ha ha. Alright, so we're going to put this in here. We're going to mix it up. We're going to turn down the heat. Alright. Mix it all up. Coconut cream doesn't typically need a lot of cornstarch. Oat milk and oat milk creamer, or oat milk half and half, will. So here's the deal with the difference between half and half plant-based versus um, the regular plant-based milk and things like that. Because I know I have already gotten questions of what you know, this says, oat milk half and half, but, I mean, what makes it half and half? So I really have to use half and half. You don't. You really don't. Um, but, let me use something like before the butter. And yes, I use lemon juice. I, I spritz it. What you're doing with the lemon juice, what I use, um, is you're effectively minimizing any bitterness within those vegetables. That's the reason you use it. Keeps everything green. Right. And you also, it says to add pork, chicken broth with something like this. You, mm, that's questionable. Um, we're going to use actual water because that's what I have. Um, but I also have coconut cream. So let's get back to that plant based milk that we were talking about. All right. So, here's the deal with the plant-based milk, is it's milk because of the ratio. And here's what I mean by that, is you have various ratios, or you use ratios that are one to four when you're making milk, okay? So, one cup oatmeal, okay, and four cups water. All right, see how liquidy that is? <laughs> we're going to put the chicken in, and then we're going to see if we need to get some water in this, because asparagus cooks really, really, really quickly. Um, and when you make half and half versus oat milk, so oat milk is one cup of oats, four cups of water, right? Half and half is one cup of oats, two cups of water. Or sometimes one and one, depending on how thick you want the mixture. And what happens is you strain all of the nut grinding up, the flour, the nut flour is effectively what it is, out of the finished product. Okay. And once you do that, then you have your plant based milk. All right, so we are going to put a little bit of cornstarch in this. Um, one to two teaspoons. Is that right? Yeah, 
a two tablespoons. So you're going to put a tablespoon whisk it, a tablespoon whisk it, okay? So here's how this works. All right, you got this? You don't want to just dump the cornstarch in. You ready? As I'm stirring it, I'm tapping it. See how things get in the way? They just tap them. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. That's how you can try to avoid clumps with the cornstarch. Now, with the cornstarch, it's going to take a minute for everything to. to you know, go ahead and thicken up. That's just the nature of the beast. And that's okay because we still have to put the chicken back in here. And then all you do is you let it simmer and you're done. Now, I'm going to say this. If this is something that you really enjoy, making this dish inside of an Instapot, so good. So basically what you do, because it's going to be in there all day, right? So you use the saute function to go ahead and saute your chicken, right? So it's done. And then throw all the other ingredients in. Yes, even the asparagus. Throw everything in there. <laughs> and then, come here, bud. Keep walking. Keep walking. Thank you. <laughs> and then put it on the soup function, okay? Because what will happen is the soup function cooks everything for you, and then voila, right? If you're going to work that day and you just don't feel like cooking, it is an excellent way to use the crock pot function. You use the crock pot function, you saute the chicken, and then you flip it immediately over to your crock pot function, and it's going to basically cook for however long you have it set. Um, it can cook on low for two hours. It can cook on high. The, the green in the asparagus is still going to be there. Okay, It is still going to show up. And this... See how thin that that sauce is. Don't necessarily think we need more because this is going to simmer down. Um, and we definitely do not need chicken broth. So, my lovelies, there is your chicken and asparagus. Now, what will happen is this is just going to get thicker and thicker. You got your garlic in here, you got your dill in here, and the only other thing I would say is what I usually do is I'll put it over rice or quinoa. I have put it over potatoes before, it's really good. And then what you do with that is you just take it, take your dill, and yes, I know it says fresh dill, I could not find fresh dill, so we're using dry. And if you all remember from last week, if you're new and this is your first time listening to me, then here's your tutorial about dried versus fresh. If you have not heard this yet, dried herbs are stronger. They are more potent when you, or they're less potent than fresh for, you know, obvious reasons. And then when, he <laughs> in his pants, man. Um, so basically, <laughs> Total distraction. Life of toddlers. So effectively what you got here is you have your chicken, you have everything, you have dried dill. And the dried dill is not going to be as potent as fresh dill. So you want to put just a little bit more to get more dill flavor in there. If you want more garlic, throw more garlic in there. Totally up to you. Um, I only used two cloves for this one. So you can definitely make this a lot more garlicky. It tastes delicious, and at this point, this is ready to serve.
It tastes absolutely amazing overnight. I do highly recommend if you're going to do this overnight, um, like as a leftover for tomorrow, make sure that you put some rice if you want in it first because then it totally mixes all the flavors in. It's absolutely delicious. So this is what I have for you today, you guys. If you have not tried this recipe, I highly recommend it. Towers are not necessary for you to cook it, um, but it is absolutely delicious and one that I love putting on menus in the springtime. So that is all, you guys, and it looks like we actually have made it under 30 minutes. How awesome is that? What would you say if you could make this and have rice at the ready? Little suggestion? Take some rice, take some quinoa, make it in advance and either store it in the fridge or go ahead and seal up smaller baggies of them, smaller serving sizes of them, and you're ready to eat in just a few minutes. Now, as we exit out of this video and move on with our day, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening and for watching. I am so happy to have you here. What you will see popping up right over there is next video if you like this recipe we've got more so like subscribe do all the little good stuff and as always if you have questions please let me know i will chat with y'all later have a wonderful night and keep on cooking all right <laughs> that sounds so corny <laughs> i will chat with you guys later go have a great weekend bye guys